Hi everyone, it's Deborah. Welcome back. After I finished the video that I made on doing the tickets for the challenge that I was doing, I realised that I could keep going with that idea and do something that was a little bit less fiddly than doing the tickets individually. And I've had a look at my viewer suggestions and I've got a few that I can sort of say I'm, I'm covering that off with this particular video. One is from Ruth Burr, who would like me to make some vintage ephemera. There's also one from Selena Stevens. Hey, Selena. She would like me to make vintage style greeting cards, although she did say probably no one else wants me to do that. But I'm thinking you can apply this method that I'm going to do to making greeting cards. I also have Dale Sue Glass, She's asked me to do something on quick and easy ephemera that is not overwhelming and this certainly will fit that particular brief. And finally, I have Jenny Roberts and Jenny would like just some ephemera ideas. So let's get going. The plan is to use the supplies that I have out and that is these bits of paper. So these bits just come from various books and things. When I sort of rip up a book or rip a part of a page off a book, I tend to just keep sort of all these little scraps as well and just pop them into this folder that I have. And I have gotten a piece of file folder. Now you can see it's got writing on it, but it's actually something I used in a class when I was doing some measurements and doing some examples in a class. So I'm going to use that as my base and I've also got some stamps. Now these are not stamps, well no they're all right but these ones here they're super bright and I probably will never use them. I've got a heap of stamps so I thought I'd get some use out of these today as well and also I've got my my stamping um, blocks, my stamps from Tim Holtz which are Field Notes CMS 396. So the plan is to put some stuff down on this page and just make something out of them. I will need my ruler, I believe, and I'm hoping it'll work out. So I've already got some strips that are pre-cut, like this one here, for example. So I'll start with things like this and I'll just lay things down. Now, I'm not sure if I want to lay them at an angle. I'll see how I go. As you know, I'm not good at putting things on angles. They don't necessarily have to have any writing on them, like this bit here isn't written on. It's just got a little bit of a black line, so I'll turn it up that way so we get the black line. And I'll just lay them in strips, I think. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. And in fact, to make it easier, because we're talking about quick and easy ephemera, I will just lay down some glue on a portion and then I'll start sticking because I know that otherwise that might dry and I'll just overlap them a little bit to get the different sort of looks that I'm after. Here's a bit of music paper. Oh, that one's already stuck on there so that can actually go on there. Here's some music paper. It's only got the edge of the music. It's also got a tiny little bit of writing on it so I'll put this one here. And what else have we got? All sorts of things. Here's a blank one, but I probably want something that's got some words on it, I think. Oh, let me grab some music paper. This will do, and I'll use my ruler just to rip it into a little strip. It doesn't have to be straight, don't really care about that. And I will put that on its side. So I don't know whether I'm going to use this. I've got a fair bit that's up vertically but you know that's okay I'll leave that on its side for now this is a piece from a German book it's the front page so I'll use this in a couple of places so I'll start with this bit down here on that paper and then we'll go for something else like for example this piece which can go here so this is quick and easy and not thinking too much. That's the plan. It's just really, I need a bit more glue on there though, is just to not think too much about what you're doing. And 
this glue dries quickly so maybe I'm putting a little bit too much but I'll just add more as I go I'll, I'll turn that up the other way because I don't want to hide that little signature or something that I've got there somebody's writing and I'll put this one up here sort of getting ahead of myself up there but never mind that'll do that'll do for now there's a little bit here I think that if you have bits of scraps this would be very quick and easy because you've already got it sort of half done for you haven't you and I'm just ripping things off I think there's a really cute little piece that again is music paper might save that for up the top I think here's a bit of an old ticket that I had on oh, that's not going to really go though is it what else is there Oh, here, there's a piece here. This is from a kid's book. Just want to take that piece off it and see what else we've got. That bit's not meant to be in there at all. And, oh, up the other way. Yep, up the other way. So I'll just stick that off there. And I'll keep going up the page because I really wanted to kind of do the whole thing and that way I can then chop it up into whatever sizes, particular sizes I want. This one here. And overlap it. There you go. This is another piece. I'll use that side of that one. And then I've got, this one says flowers, so I'll put this down somewhere too. I might do something in between those two. Put that over the top there so it matches up. Not sure if this will turn out but you know what's the worst that can happen you've wasted a little bit of paper and a bit of file folder it's not the end of the world is it in the scheme of things it's worth having a go I think I've told you before that you won't create art pieces just by being safe you need to just have a go and if you have a go you'll be amazed at some wonderful things that you come up with when you didn't even expect to come up with them. I might actually change. I was going to put the flowers down, but I like the, the other first edition thing that's on the back of this. So I'll put that here. When you're doing this, you probably, you don't want all your strips to kind of end in the one place. So I was, I've just staggered that off the edge because if you stagger them, they'll look a lot nicer. And if you just have them all kind of ending in the one spot. Let's cut this one too. And that can go, I have some words on here I think. Put that one down there. And that's coming across quite well at the moment. Oh, look at this little, like this little bit of words down the page. I don't even know where these came from. But that's nice and it's gone right to the top now. And I'm using up my whole packet of goodies that I've got here as well. I like the numbers so I think I'll do the numbers down here. And I do need something in that bit there. What else have we got? That's okay. And I probably need some more music paper by now. Getting Putting some music paper into it is a good idea as well. And again, I'm going to put it up. Actually, I might put it up here. Yep. 
tear this bit at the top and do some more in that sort of vertical piece. Definitely this one. I'm going to get that brown edge in. I really love that brown edge that's there. So I'll just take a little bit of a minute to get that in the right spot. And get some more horizontal things happening. I haven't touched the stamps yet, but I will be using them. Just bear with me while I finish this off and get this done. There's a little sump in the bottom of this page. Okay. You're not really meant to be able to read the things that I'm putting on here necessarily. It's really just about creating some interest and making it look, you know, making it look like it's something that you've created and something that looks quite nice, hopefully, when we're finished. So this is seriously, the, you know, really easy to do, just to plonk things down and have them on a page. I don't need any more music paper. I don't need any more of that. I might put a blank one at the top here, simply because this paper is just gorgeous. It's very old and I want to use it. And then I just need something in here. So let's find something else to put in there. Maybe this one can go in here. Just cut that off. And then a little bit up here, a bit more of the... Oh, actually, I'll turn it over and use the number side. Okay, so that's done, that part of it. So I'll take some now and I'll just stick them down into the gaps and over the top of the other things at various places. I've got a few big ones and a few small ones. And I don't necessarily want to be covering everything but I do want to just cover a few of these gaps where things are all right so that's step two and then step three is to go stamping so again I'm using that set which is the Tim Holtz set and I will just start popping some stamps down on them. Just, I should have put something underneath, but anyway, too late now. And especially on top of these stamps, because that will really show up then. Time to change some stamps and do some numbering. So I've got this one. Uh, overlap some. Let's see here. Here. And here. And I'm just going to keep on going actually and just put them all over randomly. Well, not randomly so much as I'm picking the place where I want them so that they look, you know, visually pleasing. I will put some words down. Oh, here. Shipment collector. This is a good one. I like this one. Let's see. One under here. Uh, I'm not going to go too crazy with these bigger ones because just simply for the fact that they are quite large. And let's see, I've got, um, I've got, let's, I had one here that I liked before, this one. Let's 
where's this got to go? I'm just looking where it might look good. Oh, I've got one there. I don't want the same one. So I've got one that's probably enough. And here's one here. Some more words. This one can go here. See what other little ones I've got. Oh, this little filed one. This will be cute. Somewhere else I need some. Um, I've got one there, maybe one. One in here and here. Mm. I always think that this is a bit like quilting. You've kind of got to look where, you know, when you're doing your quilt and you're laying out your different things, you've got to make sure you don't have the same fabrics too close to each other. I do want to do one more of these and I just don't know, maybe here. So you don't want to end up with two stamps right next door to each other. And let's see what else I've got. I've got another number. This is a different number. So I will use it. And it's smaller than the 785. So I'll just pop it around in various places as well. And let's see, something here maybe, up here, and maybe here. Okay, and what other stamps? Oh, what's that say? Destination. That's good. That was hiding. I didn't see that before. Where will I put it? How about up here? Destination. And probably something. I've got a fair bit there, haven't I? I think I need another round one, actually. But I will put this destination one down. Maybe here. And... Maybe here. Yep, okay. And I think I've got a little round one that I was using rather than the big round one. And I'll stick that around the place as well. Um, here. And somewhere else it needs to go it's not quite enough yet here and here I know they're quite close but I'll be chopping it up so it doesn't matter so you also need to think about that that you're going to chop this up which is why you probably want more on than if you're leaving it in a single piece because that way you'll get some sort of you know stamps on every piece that you've done and there overlap some as well just trying to look at where something else might be what do you think um i really want one here too this is a really good one actually this little one and one up here and hmm, here so now I'll just check the actual stamps, these stamps, and see that I've got something on every one of them. Because I don't want to find that there's nothing, something missing on one of them yet. They're pretty good actually. I've chopped that up into six tags. 
end, all I need to do now is just trim the corners and then they'll become a tag. And then I will ink the edges of the actual tag. I have inked the edges of a bit of it. Just rip that off. They look pretty cool, don't they? I'm really happy with them, actually. Sometimes you make things and you think, oh, is that going to work? And I think this has worked really well for some quick, easy ephemera. Not many supplies needed. And really just bits that I've used elsewhere and haven't needed those little bits of the paper that I've torn up. So go through your books and using bits put them into a packet I think most people tend to do that don't they and just when I was cutting them I kind of made sure that I cut them so that they you know I didn't cut right through something for example I cut that piece there because of, I didn't want the whole circle on this piece so I cut it off there and um, I made other decisions like that as I was going through and chopping them to get a bit more sort of randomness happening on the actual tag and one more and bits fallen off there so I'll have to put a bit back on that's just my bad sticking skills I think I just need to put a little bit back on there because it's fallen off so just grab a little bit and stick it on it's just fallen off a tiny bit let that dry first and then I will ink that so there you go I've got one two three four five six tags and they're pretty cool be able to use them I could you know use the back of them I could cover that if I want to but I probably won't I like to leave things in their natural state this was something where I was explaining you know how to cut up this file folder for a particular class and numbering pieces and stuff and I don't mind having that history left on the tags it's fine with me if you don't like that sort of thing then you could use a new file folder but I happen to have this off cut in the cupboard so that's why I used it and let me know what you think particularly the people who requested this now if I was making a card which is what I um, said for Selena who wants me to make vintage cards then instead of chopping this up into six tags I would have chopped it into four tag fronts and then just put that on the card and then you can write something inside the card or you could add a paper doll or something onto these which would be also a really good idea you know my love for my paper dolls so you could add paper dolls so you can always add other things later but this was just about using scraps and keeping it fairly simple and I think you know even if I added nothing to these later they look super cool so this is Deborah I hope you enjoyed that thanks very much for joining me and I'll catch you next time cheers